Hello folks, Roger Daniel here for The Magnificent World of Toys. About a week ago, we just reached 800 subscribers. And I wanna say welcome to all of those new subscribers, but also thank you folks for your ongoing support uh, doing this channel, especially through the current crisis for your patients. I know, I mean, it's, it's um, you know, the videos have kind of been few and far between, but we're trying to get back to that as soon as possible. With that being said, Check this video out real quick. I've been a sculptor since I was 12. That's when I started sculpting. Getting professional gigs when I was 15. When I was a kid, I loved to draw. I love monster toys. I had a huge Universal Monster collection when I was a kid. I was obsessed with Mighty Max, small little worlds of creatures and monsters and things. I used to just paint garage kits all the time because they're amazing. You know, they're better quality than most toys you can find. I did painting competitions at model conventions. That's where it just kind of evolved into making my own little worlds of things and creatures and characters. My name's Adam Doherty. I'm a sculptor and character designer and filmmaker, all around creative guy. For those of you who've follow the channel you guys may know who adam doherty is our creature kid who we featured uh, a couple of months ago and he talked about puglu and the story and all his inspiration behind this magnificent character so for today's video i want to take this time to share the work that i did on my puglu from the planet as you guys may know, I purchased this piece at the last decon from Justin Ishmael Toys and it's just like a really awesome, I mean, character. I mean, the, the film was fantastic. I mean, he's just a lot of fun and I, I of course I love buying artist work blank, mainly because I enjoy painting the stuff myself. I enjoy customizing. Uh, these things myself for this particular figure. I just remember buying it and thinking wow I'm gonna paint this right away and I was just super soaked and super excited and when I was looking into how Artists paint soft vinyl and things like that. It seemed a little more complicated I felt that I had to go with like some kind of spray paint method or airbrush method and and it really just sort of um, it, it it I found that those methods intimidating. I didn't want to use enamels because I wasn't sure if it would eat up the vinyl or the plastic and and I've had bad luck using spray paint on certain types of plastics and and the the spray paint or the enamel ends up really tacky and things like that and just never dries and you just end up with a sticky toy and you ruin your toy essentially. Um, and so I was really, really skeptical as far as how and what to use. I really decided to stick with what I knew, which was to paint it using acrylics. The great thing about this figure was that the base color was perfect. You can literally just add a darker wash, which is ultimately what I did. I'm really happy with the result I got. I mean, it's simply just a blue-green wash and I, I highlighted a couple areas in yellow I had several ideas as it related to how I wanted to paint my pug loop. I wanted to do something a little more meaningful than just a paint job. I started thinking, well, this is a hollow figure. It's a creature film. You know, it's a nice nod to practical effects and things like that. And so I started thinking, well, how, how can I make this figure something that is true to the original visualization of this character, but at the same time add my own twist and I was thinking, well, a lot of people have painted it in different ways and done all these cool things, but has anybody done anything with his insides? Has anybody tried to take advantage of that space inside? And I started thinking, well, maybe there's something I can do. What I did, first thing was first, was I painted it. And also, I wanted him to have realistic looking eyes. Now, his eyes aren't exactly screen accurate but that's okay so the first thing was to kind of cut out the eyes and insert the eyes but I didn't stop there what happened was like well what if those eyes can move 
and so I started to develop some type of mechanism to put in there so that those eyes can move maybe just at least look up and down but it doesn't end there I got to thinking well what can I do with his insides the idea was to try to make him some kind of animatronic give him the insides of animatronics I didn't know how I would be able to do that without having to cut him open and I didn't really want to cut him open so I got to thinking I said well what if he had an operator inside so my first thought was to take a 1-6 scale figure cut them in half and stick the torso in there and stuff like that but I started realizing that those the the shoulders were too wide they wouldn't fit in the inside and I would have to cut him I would have to cut Puglu to fit him in there and that's one thing I didn't want to do because I didn't want to risk warping the the soft vinyl so one day I'm walking around my local Target and I see some Mego Star Trek figures and some Happy Day Mego figures and I said I think a Mego figure will fit in so I took this Mego figure and I fit him in there and so uh, next thing I did I customized him to dress him up a little bit more like what a, somebody who would operate this let's say like in the 50s or 60s would dress like I put grease on his face so that he wouldn't be able to be seen through the acrylic glass eyes I stuffed that little guy in there but then it didn't end there I figured I'd create some controls inside of Pug Lou's head to steer the eyes but not only that to move around the arms I put in some little joysticks in there so there's a red which signifies the right and a blue which signifies the left arm and so when the operator tugs each joystick then the corresponding arm moves with that so the mechanism of course does not work it's 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 a mock-up but it's really cool in my opinion and, and, and that's what I wanted to do I kind of wanted to give um, I wanted to stick all the controls that control this pug Lou in the head and there's also a little monitor in there so that the operator can see what pug Lou is seeing another thing I wanted to do is add a light up feature because the cool thing is that these eyes are acrylic they're glass I mean you could kind of see through them they're transparent and so I figured if I stick a light in there his eyes may light up and sure enough it worked like a charm and at the same time it helps the operator see better inside that's pretty much uh, the process and that's what that's the idea that I wanted to use and go with with my pug loom and so my idea was also to take my pug loom and kind of compose a mock scene to take photography of and video of and it's basically pug loom and a couple of other Star Trek figures acting out a scene somewhere in outer space. So also another thing I wanted to do that I thought would be very cool is to kind of take these figures and photograph them out of character. And so, um, you know, I, I visioned this scene where the operator of Puglu has basically taken off the mask and one of his co-actors is helping him with the mask while the other one is feeding him a milkshake because it must be hot in that suit. So here are some closer shots of my Puglu. All right, folks, so that about does it for today's video of uh, the wonderful workshop painting Puglu. I hope you liked what I did with him. I, I had a lot of fun, of course, doing it. Um, one indicator for me knowing that I had fun is I basically <laughs> completed the project. And 
within a matter of days to tell you the truth. Uh, once I get in the zone and I'm enjoying what I'm doing, I start the project and I don't stop till I'm done. And Puglu was definitely one of those projects. Make sure you guys um, check out the video I did on Adam Doherty, Creature Kid. I will post a link in the description of his video. We actually sat down and talked with him and he will give you um, a lot more about the history of Puglu from the planet P as well as um, you'll learn a lot from him and, and his incredible journey to get to where he is as a creature designer and overall amazing artist. If you want a uh, Puglu from the planet P, you can actually check out Justin Ishmael's website, which I will also leave on the description page and you can order one yourself um, they just got some fresh stock they have painted versions they have unpainted versions there's a green unpainted version and a blue unpainted version but there's also blue painted versions and green painted versions and i think they're going to start releasing them in other colors which is awesome if they put out a red you better believe i'm going to get it so with that being said ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoyed this video um, once again, may those who play never gray, stay safe. Thank you for all your support and we'll see you soon.